Perfect. Awesome. Well, welcome to our last chapter chat of the fall semester. Um, thank you for joining. So today we're going to go through a little bit more about community partnerships. So defining them um, and then going into details of how to develop and maintain those relationships throughout the years. At the end, as always, we'll have some time for open discussion as well. Also, just a reminder that you can follow Chapter Leaders channel on Slack um, if you have any questions or want to communicate with other chapter leaders. As always, your CR team is here to support you. So we have a few chapter relations coordinators on the line. Um, this is the full list of each CRC along with their region. So if you ever want to refer back to it, it's here and it's also on the website. Going to the purpose of these calls. So like the first two we had this semester, the, the real goal is to have a discussion around the topic of the chapter chat. So in this case, community partnership. So share stories from your chapter or your experiences hear from CRCs about their experiences, either with their own chapters or with chapters they work with now, um, and just be able to get some ideas um, and work together through some common, common challenges that each chapter faces. Um, feel free to interject at any time. You can use the hand raise feature, um, or you can kind of just go off mute and jump in or ping in the chat. Um, but the real goal is for it to be collaborative. So as I mentioned, we've had three calls this semester. The first was on sponsorship and funding. The second was on project management with the spotlight on the project database. So how we're trying to track our projects for each chapter um, throughout the year. And then the one today is again on community partnerships. So each one we, it will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel so, so people, people can refer back to it. I'll also send out an email with a recap about this slide deck as well as a link to the chapter chat recording. So that'll be available after the call as well. Okay, so so firstly, number one, you know, defining what a community partnership is. So a community partnership is not a sponsorship, basically not, not a sponsorship relationship. Um, it's not meant to be pure, purely monetary of either a corporation or a different organization providing money to your chapter. Um, it's also not meant to be a community service, you know, or, where it's only like a one way, your chapter is either providing service to another organization or community. Um, it's really meant to be more a partnership um, between your ASW chapter and someone either in your community, um, so local organizations in your in your college's town uh, or city, or potentially other organizations on campus. So a little closer to home. Um, again, meant to be more of a two-way relationship. So maybe you're sharing ideas, maybe you're working together to create events. Um, a key part of this is you know defining and identifying why you want to be or why you want to have a community partner, and so. Some goals could be resources, so just you know additional information or additional people to help out with some initiatives could be one reason. Another could be mentorship, so partnering to have a mentor in a certain certain area. So it could be wastewater, whatever you're focusing on, um, you get some mentors and professionals in that area. Um, a third could be funding to an extent, so either you're pulling your funding together to to work on a common initiative. Um, Another one is speakers. So having people come and talk to your chapter either about the work that they're doing um, or about their organization's goals. So sharing some knowledge across both ways. And then lastly, um, just really making sure that you're pursuing projects that have impact. And so it's more of not only just doing a project because it's interesting, but, but doing one because um, it, it will help either an organization or your community. So those are some of the common goals of partnerships um, as we define them. Um, again, not sponsorship and not really just service is meant to be more of a reciprocal relationship. So Sarah can speak more about the benefits to your chapter of, of such a partnership. Yeah, so um, when you're partnering with community organizations or other um, organizations on campus, it really helps your chapter of ESW build stronger connections with your community and with your university. Um, and that can lead to better networking opportunities and awareness. So more people know about the work you're doing, about your projects um, and that type of like community building just like is a positive feedback loop. So the more people hear about the work you're doing, the more likely you are to build new partnerships and have other people want to contribute to help um in a variety of different ways um you know when you're working with outside organizations um and you're doing 
it can allow you to have um, a broader range of projects, have projects that have higher impact. Um, you can use your partnerships to help figure out kind of how to better connect the type of work that your chapter is doing with the needs of the community. Um, and when you're doing a project that has that kind of community impact, you're more likely to get press um, and you're more likely to have other people like kind of recognize the work you're doing. Um, and uh, work like projects that are done jointly with community partners um, make your project eligible for a build day grant, uh, which gives you both funding and support throughout the project. Um, and then one of the other really cool examples is if you're, you know, partnering with another organization on campus, um, you're building out the number of people who, you know, might want to be part of ESW and part of your chapter and it can help with recruitment. Um, and it can also just help you like do bigger events and have, you know, speakers that are going to be speaking to larger audiences. So you might be able to get better speakers or like more well-known speakers. Um, it's just, it's, I think there's a lot of benefit to, you know, instead of staying as in a silo to really connecting with, you know, the community around you. So whether your partner is a environmental group on campus or another engineering club or, um, a group doing activism or an outdoor club, or if it's with the local, you know, elementary school or science center or um, community garden, there are just a lot of ways that you can connect with other people and other groups and um, both benefit. Awesome. And I thought it, we thought it might be helpful to have some of the CRCs share some examples of community partnerships that they've either had themselves when they were in a chapter or that they've heard of with, with their own chapter that they work with now. So I want to just open it up to, to anyone who wants to share some examples of community partnerships that they've had in the past or currently have. Yeah, I can share a little example from the UT Austin um, chapter. Um, one year we had a speaker series that we did jointly with another environmental uh, environmental organization on campus, and um, we put on a series of three or four um, like zero waste workshops and um, just different ways to kind of get involved with the, that movement in the Austin community. So it was a really awesome opportunity to, um, I think, like share resources in the sense of like sharing um, like member bases. So we kind of like their members got to know ESW and, and what our mission was and our ESW um, members got to, to know what this other, um, these other couple uh, environmental organizations were doing. So I think it was a really awesome opportunity for, um, you know, each, each group to see um, other initiatives on campus. And, and it was just great to kind of join forces to bring in kind of some bigger speakers um, on campus. And so that was a really great um, partnership that I think um, lasted a couple years beyond that as well. So, um, yeah. Um, I have one as well. Uh, the University at Buffalo uh, chapter that I was a part of when I was in college did, um, I think they reached out to a city official who ran the, um, a number of public parks in the city of Buffalo. Um, and for several years, we had an ongoing project, um, which we called the Parks Project, where the club would collect um, pallets and recycle them and turn them into benches that they would then donate to the parks and install, um, I think, like once or twice a year. So um, that established, I think, a really good connection um, with the town. Um, it allowed students to give back to the community and also set up kind of a, a nice publicity um, outreach type uh, uh, project for the club, so. Awesome. Are there any other kind of thoughts or questions around community partnerships, what they are, um, goals, benefits?
And those examples were super helpful. So I think that'll be really interesting too in the recording for people listening back. Great. So moving on to the next section. So once you've identified why you want a partnership, um, that you know, we want to talk about how to develop that further and maintain it over time. So I'll turn it over to Molly to talk a little bit more about this topic. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, once you kind of understand, like once you understand what a community partner is and, and what might make sense for you, um, it, it's helpful to start identifying some potential community partners, whether that's um, people within your, um, your town or your city, or if that's um, organizations on your university um, or on your campus. Um, it's, it's good to kind of understand what your goals are um, as an ESW chapter and, and seek out organizations that share that goal. Um, if you have no idea where to start and you have no idea of what organizations might share your, um, your goals and your um, ideas, uh, professors and advisors are really good resources. They know a lot of people through their own um, careers and research and everything. So they might have some great connections that you can um, you know, utilize and, and they might be good people to kind of put you in contact with those, um, those connections or organizations. Um, so that kind of leads to the next point is, is making that effort to reach out to a potential partner. Um, and that'll totally depend on the type of partnership. So if it's, um, if it's like a new organization that your organization has never partnered with, um, it's, you know, you can always cold email um, people, which means just like reaching out um, as, as a new contact. You can also attend networking events. So if you're uh, if your campus holds uh, tabling events, that's a really good place to get to know other organizations on your campus and, and kind of see who has the, you know, similar goals um, with your ESW chapter. And then you can also reach out to existing relationships, um, you know, whether that is a personal relationship that you as an officer have with another officer in another organization, that's a great um, route to take. Or if your uh, ESW chapter has partnered with particular partner uh, organizations in the past, um, you know, reaching out to those organizations is great. Um, so that's kind of the, the identifying what you want in a community partnership and what your ideas and goals are and then reaching out. And then once you've uh, created that contact, it's really important to maintain that and, um, you know, keep in contact with that org to um, put on whatever event or project initiative is. And it's gonna depend. So um, say there's like a one-time event that you are uh, partnering with an organization on, whether it's like a build day type event or um, a particular project um, that you're, you're doing, um, it's good to kind of recap at the end of that event with the people that were involved to identify what went well, um, how you're going to maintain that in the future. If it's an ongoing relationship, like more of a mentorship on a project, um, it's good to set up reoccurring meetings with those people and, and have an established way to communicate with them uh, moving forward. And it's also really important to establish the expectations and roles of each individual or each group within that partnership. So just being very clear with your, um, your expectations and understanding theirs and, and what both groups are getting um, out of that particular partnership is very important. And then um, this kind of goes along with maintaining this um, partnership, but it's really important, as, especially as a student um, organization where there's new leadership coming in um, potentially every year, you're not going to have the same uh, people to, to communicate. So it's really important that if this is um, an event or a project or initiative that you want to see continue moving on in the future, it's really important to bring in some younger officers or younger members um, and, and let them know that, you know, this initiative exists and we want this to continue. So um, that what will help in that transition is just um, taking very detailed notes of any minutes um, of any meetings you have with those partners um, and definitely, you know, uh, creating a, a solid contact list of people from that organization that future officers can reach out to. Um, and then kind of goes along with documenting everything, but, you know, you want to have some documents that someone in the future can look back on so they understand the origin of the partnership, why you initially reached out, what the goal was, 
Um, and then, you know, any um, be very detailed in what the event or project was so you can recreate it in the future. Um, so it's just really important to, to document everything you do in great detail so um, officers in the, in the future can understand why it exists and why we want to continue that partnership. So um, I know that's a lot, but if, if any other CRCs have ideas on um, you know, reaching out or maintaining, um, love to hear any, any additional thoughts on that. Yeah, I would just say keeping the contact information um, and sort of a little bit of a description of partner organizations is definitely something that I found to be really helpful um, and goes beyond even partnerships. But like anytime you had a speaker or, um, you know, an organization that helped donate materials or, um, you know, a professor who said like, yeah, like you can use, you know, our lab for X, Y, and Z, like any of those types of contacts are just really, really nice when somebody like has that all written down and can pass it on to the next board. Um, and it keeps, you know, a continuity and it just makes it, you know, easier for your chapter in future years. Um, and people don't have to then go and redo the work that you did putting that together. Are there any questions about any of this? No, I'm good. Awesome, glad to hear it. Has Michigan State worked with any partners or is it something that you're looking to do in the future? Uh, for next semester, we have planned a partnership with a nature center that is really close to the university. Next. We're planning on building a wind turbine in the nature center. They want to use it as a, like an informational thing for visitors to see what things they can do in their houses, like sustainable practices. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so we might do that. That's great. And that's another good example of um, you know a partnership that's starting with maybe one specific initiative and potentially in the future, you could work with them for something else or, or another example or another build. So um, that's a great example of one that you would, would want to maintain over time and make sure that you're keeping keeping up with too. Great. So this brings us to more of the open discussion portion of the call. So. Um, are there any other kind of thoughts, examples, questions? Any good things? Awesome. And on, on the CRCs and kind of thinking about some partnerships and some of the ones we brought up earlier, um, are there any other examples that come to mind or things you think are really important to think about and, and maybe that would even help Michigan State um, as they kind of go and enter this partnership? Um, I think just knowing that anytime you're doing something with an outside organization, you know, it's, things always take a little bit longer than you think and there's a lot of coordination involved. So reaching out early, setting expectations and a timeline and making sure that you're just on the same page throughout the whole process um, and knowing like, you know, what, being able to like properly explain what you bring to the partnership and what you're expecting um, from them. So just like good, clear communication um, is always helpful um, in, in establishing partnerships and, and maintaining, you know, good relationships throughout the whole thing. Yeah, and I think kind of going back to the point of um, like maintaining the, the contact, it's really important maybe after this, like, I don't know if the, the turbine build is going to be like one day or, um, you know, over the course of a couple of weekends or something, but um, it might be a good idea to sit down with the, the leaders of, of that organization um, 
you know, after the event and kind of go over the, the, the expectations and goals that you guys set out at the beginning and, and see if um, the event went the way you thought. And, and then I think like Emma said, just like, it's a good opportunity to, um, you know, present yourself as an organization that's willing to partner in the future. If, if like that initiative is something that they want additional help on in the future and, and you feel that's a good opportunity for you, just being clear in, in those, um, those goals and, and kind of getting the feedback from the initial event. And, um, you know, it's a good, that's a good starting point to maintain that contact moving forward. Um, I guess just to tack on to that a little bit, um, I think uh, uh, documenting the, the event that you have or the communication and the build um, really well uh, is a super important and kind of obvious step that can get overlooked. Um, having photos and, and keeping track of like the dates and, and uh, material logs and stuff like that um, while you're working with them can come in handy when you are reaching out for future um, uh, connections with, with the community and stuff like that. And when you wanna, it's, it's good um, uh, promotional uh, stock, I guess, for, for the club within the school too. So take lots of pictures. And if you want more information on project documentation, you can check out last month's chapter chat, um, which will is currently up on the ESW events YouTube channel and has a lot more information on that. Thanks. Great, so I will stop sharing. I think we covered kind of the key key aspects of you know what we want to cover today in terms of you know, what is community partnership developing maintaining it um i know it's it's a little on the early side um but if everyone feels like we covered key aspects then maybe we're good to end early and just we have a, a shorter recording then out um on youtube and so i'll like i said before i'll send out a an email with the, a recap of those slides that we covered as well as the length of the recording so all that will be available um, to share with chapters. Um, so CRCs share out your chapters and then as well, um, you know, with your own chapters. So thank you all for joining. I really appreciate it. And thank you for the CRCs for chiming in with your examples and, and stories. Um, hope everyone has a great upcoming Thanksgiving. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you too.